Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Enter the Ether, the weekly podcast all about the upcoming third-person MOBA, MOBA <laughs> Ethereal Clash of Souls. I am your host, the Mangoose, and joining me, as always, is my friend and co-host, Jelly Knees. How you doing, Jelly? I'm doing fantastic, Mangoose. After, what, 51 weeks? You, you can't say the intro? You can't say the word MOBA, of all things? <laughs> <laughs> I have nailed the... Uh, okay, maybe I haven't nailed the outro. But I nailed the <laughs> intro every time, all right? 50 out of 51 times. Not not anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not bad. It's not a bad average. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing oh. fantastic, man. Goose, happy to be here, man. So you guys had your community corner very recently. A lot of great information. Uh, probably the most important thing that we should put out immediately. Another stress test, 18 December. Yep, I was absolutely. Hoping for this because I was like, man, if they go Ryan to pre alpha without testing the game again, of course, I mean, there's no guarantee that pre alpha is going to be just constantly up and playable and, and all that, but I'm sure it'll go down for maintenance and patches and all and, and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, I was I was very apprehensive that there wasn't going to be another stress test before the before the pre alpha, but there is. There's going to be one 18 December, and if you had a key, if you gained access to the last stress test, you get access to this stress test, which I thought was really cool of you guys. Yeah, absolutely. It's we want to. It's the point is to stress it, right? If we break at the same point, then clearly we didn't do our job. <laughs> so we want to start kind of at that point and then increase from there. And, and it's also, uh, there's definitely a proof of concept to the community over it of like, in a month, we were able to turn this around that the same point that we broke before is now playable. And now we're going forward from there. Right. I'm just happy because like I had already messaged like the, like I, I got the, the keys from you guys to give, to give to my community. And I had like a little drawing in my discord and had my winners. I was, I felt bad because a lot of them got keys and were very excited, but they didn't get off work until after the test was already done for. So mm -hmm. I was like, I, I messaged them, told them, was like, if they give me keys for this next one, I will make sure you get keys. Like if they, if they do another, another stress test and, but I don't have to do that now. They, their key nope. will, <laughs> their key will work. They're all in, man. That's awesome. That, yeah, that, that. I was just thinking that would suck so hard to win a key to some to like yes I finally get to play Ethereal and then like nope didn't get yeah. off work in time. We absolutely wanted to do the best we could to alleviate some of those issues by just letting everybody in that already has access. Right on, that's greatly appreciated. It's it's one of those we don't want you to have to play the lottery twice. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, you won. We're gonna take it back and hopefully you win the second time. Yeah, like, no, right. It just feels bad. <laughs> that's like winning the lottery but not getting there in time to get the money oh oh man no <laughs> sorry we're closed we're a government government uh, agency so. uh, nope <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh again i want to say 18 december 18 december that's the yeah the, the and if you guys one. aren't signed up for the newsletter go do that on the website in the top right says newsletter click that takes you down enter your email if you aren't sure if you're part of the newsletter already it will tell you if your email is already in the list so either way go do it just to make sure that you're in there to get the chance for the access key that's something i kind of wanted to address tonight i've had a lot of people tell me they've had problems with the, with the website just like in general like loading slowly and um i know one guy said that he didn't want to sign up because it said the website wasn't secure so they didn't he didn't feel Which, comfortable the website is secure now. That was an issue we were having with when they switched over the website several months ago at this point um, to different a different hosting service. Mm -hmm. There was an issue with the, the communication with the hosting service to get it secured, which has since been resolved. So it is actually it is secured now. It does have a secured domain. OK, excellent. Excellent. That's that's really, really good news because it does that just portrays undying as being untrustworthy if you don't have a secure website. Absolutely. And so. If there, if you guys are having issues with the website, please either send myself a message or go to the website support channel in our Discord and let us know. Because sometimes it's if we don't realize there's an issue, it's hard to fix it. And so, it, right. if you guys encounter anything, please let us know. We're happy to take a look into anything we can. And War Dance is usually really it's War Dance, right? That's he's mm -hmm. usually really quick with his responses and, trying and to, fixes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, uh, so the hero release order. That's you guys already also talked about that so we've got our our, our seven now mm -hmm. and then after that's going to be grognart 
Correct. But then after that is Exial, Zero, then Malware, and then Asheron. Correct. Which a lot of people seem to have forgotten about Asheron. <laughs> Acheron, Mangoose. Acheron. A a Asheron. It's not Ash. Ac okay. Acheron. Got to get all the phlegm in there. Uh, but yes, that, those are the next four afterwards. There's no defined order between those four. It's just determining that those are the four that are coming afterwards. And then who's ready first gets to be the first one that comes out. Oh, so that's not the exact order? Correct. So we could get... You may get malware and then Acheron. And <laughs> then Acheron. you may get Zero and then Exile. <laughs> Spitting all over myself saying that. <laughs> Okay, so I thought this was like the, the set order of release, but Grognark is definitely next, right? Grognark is definitely next. Correct. Okay, good, because I'm really, really excited to play Grognark. Yeah. Oh, over he's gonna, he's over gonna... any of these four, really. <laughs> of course, I don't yeah, know their so kids. Those, but... those are the next four. Those are all in production right now in various stages in the current process. But like I said, whichever one of those is ready to come out first, we'll, you'll, we'll give out more information accordingly with that. This question got brought up. I think it was during the community corner in chat. Doesn't it make sense to kind of halt production on new heroes until you can get all the mocap stuff done? Because I know you guys uh, have the mocap suit now, right? Yes, we do. So a lot of the mocap actually is already being done for those heroes. Okay. So it's kind of, it depends on what state the animations were already completed for them by the time we received the mocap. If the animations were mostly done, we complete the remaining ones. And then kind of similar to the pre-alpha 7, we'll have to go back and complete the initial animations that were already completed. But if they were not completed, then almost all of their animations are being done in the mocap. So it just depends on what state the animations were already in. Okay. Because right a lot on. of them were already in progress by the time we received the suit. Cool. Right on. Well, that answers that question. And then um, you guys just were just completely 100% transparent with explaining what exactly happened with the stress test, which I didn't understand all of it, of course, but <laughs> it was still nice to get that upfront explanation and find out exactly what went wrong. It, it gives me a more of a warm fuzzy that you guys are able to fix it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's like Skifter broke down all the different reasons as to why what happened happened. Um, and mostly comes down to a communication issue between different services, between matchmaking in the back end between matchmaking in the database between the servers and matchmaking right and it's, it's a communication breakdown to an extent and so it's just fixing those communication channels and then it should be good to go from there was it driving you insane a little bit but it's fine <laughs> <laughs> and let's see website already covered that mocap suit where i covered that change to the mini map um i didn't quite understand this the first go through with uh, when i was watching the the live but as i watched rewatched the um the community corner i understood it a little better so you guys are thinking of keeping the mini map the way it is where you only see what lane you're in and you can scroll to see the other lanes however there'll be like just like when you're in a moba or something you hit the m key and a map will pop up and it'll be opaque so you can still see what's going on but you'll still see the entire map i mean that may not be the fix but that's kind of what was pro proposed by skifter yeah, that's something we're looking into now, um, getting it into our testers' hands to see how it feels, is being able to assign a key, or even when you press tab to see the scoreboard, maybe it's just like underneath the scoreboard as well. Uh, being able that you have a way that at a glance, if you're like, what's going on in ice lane right now? And you can just quickly press the button, look at it and go, okay, and move on. Uh, but then you'll always have one of the three lanes on your screen at all times. So it's just trying to find a good balance because part of it is, we know our MOBA is different by having the three completely separated lanes. And so putting all three lanes on screen takes up an enormous amount of screen space. Trying to putting enough, put them, putting them up there and making the details visible that they're at, it's actually useful to have. Because in order to shrink it down, you could be like, oh yeah, we have all three, but then there's nothing, there's no information there for you. And so it's finding that balance between giving information, but still keeping it to the unique style of what the game is. Right. Could you not just make a bigger mini map that encompasses everything and make that transparent in the corner? Not transparent, not but opaque. Not together because of the way that the lanes. Yeah. 
because of the way that the lanes work and are structured, they don't fit together in a piece like that. And so it's just the sizing is just all complicated and hard to explain. Skip and I went hours trying to get this version of the minimap to work. So it's <laughs> so Elysium's not Pangea. All right. It is not. It is not connected. <laughs> no. <laughs> I so Ice Lane didn't break off from Void due to Correct. tectonic plates. No, they're three that. separate okay. places that just happen to float together and become one place. <laughs> okay, right on. You can blame the elders if you want. I do. I will blame the elders. <laughs> Give them a piece of my mind. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and the the same accounts that you made for the last stress test will carry over into this one. Yep, all good to go. So that's, you don't have to recreate your account. You don't have to do any of that kind of stuff. Um, you can just log into the same one. You should be good to go. Here's a minor annoyance that I have. My account username and just display name are different things. And sometimes I don't remember what my account name was. Well, that's Mangoose. You could have set it up to be the same thing. I told you that. Could you? Yeah. Did you tell it me that? It didn't used to be that way, but when you created your new account for the stress test yes okay well mangoose doesn't read he doesn't if, read my announcements he doesn't read instructions he doesn't he just he just mangooses it i i read announcements and listen to instructions from everybody but you well okay that i believe <laughs> <laughs> okay so that there's a there's my tip for everybody when you're setting up your account make your username and your <laughs> account name, name the same the same, the same. <laughs> <laughs> and Let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this this got brought up. People have not forgotten the Overseer class. No, they have not. They're Holy still speculating. <laughs> Do you know anything about the Overseer class? Do I? Yes. Um, it's very... Okay. What I know is very low level because it's something that hasn't been planned to be implemented anytime soon. So from the marketing aspect, I don't need to know very much about it because it's not something I'm announcing next week. So it's... It's kind of one of those, like, we've got bigger fish to worry about right now. And then yeah. when we get to that fish, we'll talk about it more and, and explain more what that is. But, like, in a pinch, I could bribe you with enough Dr. Pepper to get a little <laughs> bit of info <laughs> on the Overseer class. Yes, yes. In a pinch, you could bribe me with enough Dr. Pepper, <laughs> theoretically. What about the Dr. Pepper barbecue sauce from Sheets? What if... Oh, dude, that is pretty good. Not going to lie. <laughs> we <laughs> don't have sheets on the West Coast, so it makes me sad. Oh, that sucks. That sucks sheets for you. Sheets the best. <laughs> I know, they are. They're incredible, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you guys have something on the West Coast that's sheets like. No. You don't? Really? No. Oh, you Seven poor Eleven, bastards. Not really. That's, that's garbage. Sheets is incredible. I, when I went to Pittsburgh and went to sheets for the first time, I was blown away. New Sheets podcast incoming. <laughs> we'll talk all about Sheets. We'll at them on Twitter and be like, hey. <laughs> we'll talk about their new products. <laughs> like, like, sheets is opening in this town. <laughs> Perfect. Very oh. uninteresting podcast. <laughs> and let's see. Controller support. You're saying that it's not going to be in there for the alpha release? It's not looking like it's going to be there on day one, but it's definitely a priority for us. So it's going to be as we can implement it uh, shortly thereafter. Okay. I know a lot of people are looking forward to controller. And that's kind of like, to me, that's one of the points of having a third person MOBA is that you can play it on a controller. Because you can't, we saw what happened with Genesis. You can't really have a top down that you can play on controller. It just doesn't work out. But yeah, so one thing I have done recently just to test is knowing that we weren't going to have controller support is there are third-party programs you can download that will translate your controller into mouse and keyboard movements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and those actually do work in the game. So I did try that out recently. Uh, it was a very bare-bones test. It was just a, does this work? Yes, it does. Okay, call it a day. So for the time being, some people may want to look into that until we actually get the definitive controller support in the game. What about voice activation? I know you did that in a game of Fault one time where you had all your abilities voice activated. That shit was awesome, by the way. I have not tried that yet, but maybe for this next coming upcoming stress test, I'll play some ethereal games with voice activation. One of the best streams I've ever, <laughs> ever seen. Q R. People randomly joining in. Why is he just saying Q a lot? Like, <laughs> Yeah, that was awesome. 
Now let me play Talos with voice activation. Oh yeah, that sounds like a great way to <laughs> lose my marbles. <laughs> Q, Q again, E, E again. <laughs> e, E. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Like in game with Talos, you could Q pretty much constantly. You just yeah. walk down like Q, 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 Q. <laughs> That's gonna be Shad's favorite character. Oh my gosh, that was bad. That was bad, man. <laughs> that was awesome. No. Um, but yeah, no, it's all of that kind of stuff. We talked about, I know you and I talked about it on For the Minions, but we haven't talked about it here, is the new map and the new item images that we got were also really cool to be able to share with people. Um, and lots of improvements still being done on the new map, of course. That Those are, I won't say early images, but those are not the final final product mm -hmm. in terms of completion so a lot some of that may change but for the most part that's the general idea is the updated lanes and how they look and it looks amazing and mm -hmm. that, that was one question from the community that i don't remember what the answer was you guys still plan to have weather effects right correct so how is that going to affect the new map design so it, each the current idea because weather isn't implemented yet is that each lane will have slight variations in terms of what the weather looks like. So if it's, just as an example, if it's raining on fire lane, it may create steam because it's on the fire lane. And okay. so it's slight variations like that is what we're kind of thinking about for now. But until the system gets fully fleshed out, we don't have a full plan as to what that looks like. Okay. Still pretty cool. Yeah. It'd also be cool if Marina just was just way less effective in fire lane. <laughs> that's what you said you wanted a dried out marina while she's walking around fire lane <laughs> like all right she maybe, has a I'll smaller do you. like her riptide just it shrinks <laughs> immediately evaporates if she still had her water hair it like dries out and she just bald, <laughs> she just bald. <laughs> <laughs> oh that'd be it. crazy big, big fan i'm gonna push for water hair now just so we can <laughs> do that <laughs> to have bald marina <laughs> oh shit um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This got brought up. The Premium Myth Pack, which is part of the Patreon tiers. Mm -hmm. I love this because it's kind of like the God Pack from Smite. Mm -hmm. Like, you get, you pay one time, you get unlocked all the myths. But not only that, but you also get their first skin. Yeah, so that's, that's there's two different versions. There's the regular Myth Pack and the Premium Myth Pack. The regular is just the myths themselves. And then the Premium, which I believe is unlocked at the highest tier of Patreon. So the $800 cumulative tier. Um, the premium myth pack gives you, yeah, the first, their myth and their first skin forever. Okay. And that's something that I actually pulled from Paragon because that when I paid, when I got access to the closed beta for Paragon, closed alpha, one of them, um, I got a, a hero pack that gave me their first skin and all the heroes as they released. And that was huge for me. That was something that I was always excited to get in the game. Even if I didn't like the skin, I knew I had skin variation just off the drop. And I always got the new hero at the same time. That's pretty awesome. I think that's a great idea. And, uh, okay, so the items. You guys went over what all the items did, but, like, mm. I don't quite remember everything you guys talked about. But, um... How dare the, you, man? So you don't, art, you, don't listen, you don't read announcements? You don't read instructions? <laughs> and you don't listen to me when I talk on Community Corners now? Okay, but I'm I'm Team Jelly, and he's not Team Skifter, so... That's true. All right, all right, you win. You, you make up for it. It's <laughs> evened out now. <laughs> I don't care about all your information and stuff. I just want you to murder people with Malaya for me. All right, can do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the item art looks fantastic. Looks absolutely amazing. Most of it was starter items. The only thing was the uh, the ring of protection, which mm -hmm. I brought up during the stream. The bullets pinging off of it must be tiny or that ring must be huge. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ring for a Ron, so it's more of a bracelet for him that he just... <laughs> puts his fist through it and then it just he's using it it's uh wonder woman's bracers that she's just deflecting bullets off <laughs> but it's that's what i was thinking it, it's a ring that that would only fit, fiddle malaya with her giant mitts <laughs> <laughs> yeah really cool design though like the little the the little deformed rounds mm -hmm. pinging off of it and stuff and then the um the claw with with the 
Bloody uh, Bloody Claw. Yeah. Bloody, now I can't remember the name of the. I'm pretty sure it's Bloody Claw. <laughs> yeah. It, they just all looked really, really cool. Yeah, um, and I mentioned it in the stream, but the thing, the more I look at them, the more I love it. Is the the imperfections of them all, like the the smudges on the the lucky coin or the kind of metal reflection of Bloody Claws. Like they're all designed to look as realistic as possible, despite still being that kind of surreal art at the same yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah, you guys' artwork is just like head and shoulders above anybody else in this 3D MOBA space. And that includes the established ones like Smite. Mm -hmm. um, it includes Paragon, too. The item art for Ethereal is better than anything Paragon ever had. So yeah. people might argue that the card system, whenever they had the three card system, had some pretty. They did have some cool art. They had some cool cards, but I don't. Those I are like don't... splash arts, though. Those are a much grander scale than just a item. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and even even still, I, I I don't think they were quite as cool as what Ethereal has. It's just, in my opinion. I mean, that's all. All right. Who on the art team is paying you, Mangoose? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anybody on the art team. Uh, no, but I, I completely agree with you. The art is head and shoulders above the what we've seen from other, like you said, established MOBAs, the other para zombies in the space. And... The fact that it's like that, but it's still going to be a small thing in your corner of the corner of your screen, I think is huge. Like it just sells that every we're trying to make every aspect of this game pristine and not because, oh, it's going to be small. So we don't need to worry about that. No, yeah. it's going to be this like it, everything has to be at a certain level or above. That's and that's really the goal we're shooting for. That's one thing you definitely don't see too many people complain about is the UI like people loved UI. They have, I mean, maybe some small things like this color could be different or this could be, but like the UI for Ethereal was just like way better than Fault's first UI, than Predecessor's first UI, than Overprime's first UI. It was just way more fleshed out and intuitive than any of those other games. And that's a pretty good head start. UI, I, f I have discovered, is far more important to people than I had ever. It's not that important to me for real. Like I can, mm -hmm. I can do with some just random boxes and and crap. But <laughs> all right, I'm gonna put a toggle in there of Mangoose UI, Mangoose and you just UI. press the button. It just boxes everywhere, and everything is terrible, and it <laughs> it cuts up everything but like five percent of your screen. <laughs> Sounds perfect. You heard it here first. Mangoose wants that UI. But oh, I mean, like I don't need to be all fancy and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, don't no no, don't worry. I'm I'll go into Microsoft Paint. I'll design a <laughs> UI for you and put a checkbox in there. Okay, okay. You see, that's fine. That's fine with me. It's not going to be fancy. I promise you that. <laughs> UI is just not that important to me, but it's it's very important to a lot of people. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm and, not denying that. I think a big thing for UI, once you get to higher levels of play, is it does make a slight competitive advantage, right? Being able to have translucency in one part of the UI. Versus it be just being solid can obstruct a part of your screen. You may not see a flying Leah go by until far too late. You may not see like it gives just those slight advantages just by having some of that cleaner UI and, and better design across yeah. the board. Uh, any any chance we can get um, customizable UI? I think I'm pretty sure that was one of the questions that was asked during the. It's on the plan definitely that we want as customizable UI as we can absolutely provide. I think in the MOBA space. The gold standard for customizable UI is Smite. And every time I see Smite's customizable UI, I'm blown away at how much control they give. <laughs> because I'm just like, you can move that wherever you want. You can set translucency to zero. You can set like, you can just do whatever you please on it. And I think that's incredible. Yeah. So for me, that's what I push. Like when we start implementing that customizable UI, I'm going to be like, I want all of these features. Give me all these features. I won't use half of them. But <laughs> Just the fact to have them is huge for a lot of people. I, back back in my World of Warcraft days, they had a lot of mods where you could just design your own UI. Mm -hmm. And holy crap, was that helpful when playing? Like you could have everything you wanted. If you wanted it, like I had it centered around my character. Like everything I needed to know was right there. I just lost your camera. Uh-oh. We're back. <laughs> and he's back. But yeah, I like that. Um... Have, have we talked about the map images on ETE? Mm -mm. We've talked about them on FTM. I've talked about them with Wendy everywhere on else. This show. We've <laughs> talked about it everywhere else. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I guess it's kind of why I forgot about them. I, I figured we'd already we had already covered them. But yeah, the new map images, like 
we've already talked about a little bit with the weather, but they're amazing. Like ice lane lo is looks like s snow ice? covered and <laughs> fire lane looks burned out and desolate. And then even the improvements to void lane, I think are great. I, um, I kind of mentioned it during the, the community corner, but it's less visually busy. Like that's been my problem with the map a little bit is there's mm -hmm. so many different colors and textures and everything that I'm a little since overwhelmed in my senses, but like, this was very like, you've got the path, which is like a dark Brown. You've got some green foliage and then you've got some blue flowers. And like, there's not that much deviation between that's still really pretty. It still looks really good, but I don't get that sensory overload that I got from the map before. Mm -hmm. And that's something that the level design team in the early versions of the map was really trying to hone down a giving each lane its own color palette for one thing that way there's no question what lane you're in right you've got kind of a lush vegetation in void you've got the blue ice snow feeling in ice and then you've got the kind of cracked gray black in fire um and i think they've done a great job in establishing those aesthetics for each lane to make it more definitive but at the same time simplifying it to make it very easy to understand, very intuitive, less sensory overload in terms of coloration and all that kind of stuff. Right. And I think it just fits better. In some of the testing we've done on the new map, being on Void Lane kind of gives you this like fresh feeling. Like I don't know how to describe it other than <laughs> that because the greens, they're not like I can't I can't think of another way to describe them other than this, but they're not this like lime vomit green color in a lot of places they're actually like a lush forest green which is a lot easier on the eyes for one thing but also just more pleasing to look at and just feels better overall i like how you say this with your lime green background <laughs> i never said i was easy on the eyes i gotta distract somehow <laughs> um, my, my one concern um has to do a little bit with accessibility as someone who experiences pretty frequent migraines. I think if I were to play on the ice lane for a couple hours, it would probably be, it was, it would get to be a little, a little much, a little much brightness. Yeah. And that's something accessibility, something we're tackling right now, actually in the future we're, we're like, cause we're already working on like colorblind settings. And so we're trying to, increase the accessibility options and a brightness slider is something we've been in talks in talk about trying to determine a better way because there are absolutely moments on ice where you're standing there and you're going like okay cool thank you i can't <laughs> thanks and so it's finding ways to combat that is kind of what we're going through right now too and for now i'll just keep sunglasses on my desk i'm gonna bring them into ice i'll just <laughs> <laughs> But you take them off when you're on any other lane. Yeah, the only. Exactly. Oh, I'm going to ice. Okay, I'm ready. Like <laughs> you can tell when streamers are in ice lane just by looking at their. <laughs> oh, he's got sunglasses on. He's in ice lane. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's been a little bit of a redesign too. It seemed to to some of the lanes. A, a little bit here and there, um, like the ice cave is more of an ice cave instead of a giant snowball on the side of the lane. Um, there's slight redesign in terms of lane structure. They're not quite as straight shots as they used to be. There's a little bit of a bench to them around the, the edges. Uh, void lane isn't a straight shot as much as it used to be. It kind of has a little more curves. Um, so it's, it's little improvements here and there, but nothing super crazy drastic overall. Right. Good to go. All right, I think that about exhausts everything that I wanted to talk about, unless you had anything else. I can't think of anything else. Stress test. I mean, it's it's <laughs> going to be exciting. I'm really looking forward to this one, how too. How many days is that? Is how many days? days? Uh, days. <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it, it's eight days after Fault Patch 14. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know how many days specifically. It's though. 20 days from right now. Not when you're right watching meow. this, okay. but right meow. All right. 18 days from the day you're watching this. <laughs> Start the countdown. Where's Shad? Shad needs to make like a countdown to and then just post it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Shad. We've been beating up on him this. What? No, Shad's great. You've been beating up on him. I, I didn't I'm beat up on him. Fan. I said he was going to like tell us because of all the cues. 
other than Shad is on Team Skifter. Oh, is uh, he I'm really? A huge Shad fan. Yeah, he is. Unfortunately, Shad. I thought, I thought better of him. I, I, we all did. We're all a little disappointed. So I get it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's going to about close it out. Anything you got to plug, Jelly? Uh, just streams. As of yesterday, we did Marvelous Monday. <laughs> it's always weird that we're yeah, two days. Right. Whatever. Uh, we do Marvelous Monday every week on my stream at eight o'clock Mountain Time. And it's always a good time. So it's super fun. And then we play the previous week's winner gets to pick a game for me to play on stream. So it's always exciting. It's always super fun. What game did you play yesterday, which is in the future from now? <laughs> uh, I think it's some like weird Western meme game. I don't quite know what she chose for me, but it was <laughs> it's a weird, okay, weird trip okay. from what I've seen on Steam. <laughs> Now, guys, if if you keep thinking to yourself, man, I wanted to participate in Marvelous Monday and I completely forgot about it, just go go follow Jelly on Twitch and 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 subscribe to him on YouTube, and you'll get notified, and then you can you can always show up. Wow, Mangoose has started out with not plugging anything even for himself, and now he's plugging other people. Wow, <laughs> I've always plugged that's, other people. We're, that's pretty good. That's how I have two kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the jokes. I thought you were gonna say it, and I was like, "Nah, he wouldn't. He wouldn't do that." That was a literal dad joke. So many layers. All right, well, that's going to close it out for <laughs> this week. Close it out on a not so great note. <laughs> <laughs> December eighteenth, folks, sign up for the new. Once you sign up for the newsletter, you signed up for the for a chance to get in there. If you already got in there once, you're going to get in there again, and hopefully, this will go way way better so you can all join us as we enter the ether man goose shout out to channel members foolish blood hunter jelly knees meow mix for men stunt and ferret 